Welcome to virtual school day two. Thank you for being present and having your pencil and your notebook ready so that we can begin class on time. Just kidding. Today's lesson is coming to you live from Kathmandu's International Airport where we're going to be learning about comparative anatomy, uh, homologous, analogous, and vestigial structures. So scientists who are looking for evidence of evolution or of species changing over time look to the anatomy of the different creatures that they can find, both in present form and in what we can see through the fossil record. And some of the things they see there have led them to believe that there may be changes in the anatomy of species over time. The first one is homologous structures. If you'll notice, you'll see that the word homologous begins with the prefix homo that we've been studying throughout the year. And remember that homo means same. So as homologous chromosomes contain DNA for the same traits, and homozygous alleles are the same allele. So too also a homologous structure is structures that are considered to have the same evolutionary origin, or in other words, a common ancestor. Let's take a look at a few. First, we have the arm bones of many mammals and other species. If you take a close look at this picture, you'll see that uh, the upper arm bone is a singular bone, that's the purple one. Uh, the forearm bone is two bones, and then all of these creatures have five, quote unquote, finger bones. Now, I can't say for sure that all of these bone structures did not independently develop. I have no way of knowing that they all have the exact same ancestor who had the first arm and finger bones that were like this, but scientists do consider this a pretty solid mm, evidence towards the idea that perhaps they all did come from the same place. It does seem sort of random that all of these different creatures would develop these finger bones, especially in the ones such as the porpoise who don't seem to really have any need for finger bones in the first place. We see homologous structures in a lot of different places as well. For example, the human heart and the turtle heart are shockingly similar. Again, perhaps these two anatomies developed randomly on their own, or maybe they share an origin. Next, we have analogous structures. Uh, don't mistake these. They are structures that look or function rather similarly, but on the inside uh, don't have enough commonalities for us to draw any kind of evolutionary relationships from them. In this picture, you can see the bird, the bat, and the butterfly. While they all do have wings, it's generally thought that they did develop quite independently from one another. What that means is one of these species did not descend from the other species. They're so distantly related that their wings had to develop naturally in response to their environments without any influence from one another. And lastly, we have vestigial structures, my favorite one. These are things in our anatomy and the anatomies of other animal species that seem to have absolutely no purpose. So again, you find yourself asking, why would we develop useless structures in our bodies? And the scientific answer or theory to respond to that is perhaps these structures had a purpose in the distant past. Uh, one of the most common ones is the pelvis bone of the whales. Your pelvis is the bone that your legs attach to, your hips, and whales still have this pelvis bone to this day sometimes. As you may remember from when we used to have in-person classes, the whale is actually a mammal, and it is believed that the whale did descend from creatures that once had legs, as you can see in this photo here. So vestigial structures give us a hint that 
perhaps these parts of our anatomy did once have a more important purpose. Humans have several vestigial structures, as you can see here. Again, I can't say for sure that these parts of our body have no purpose, but it surely seems that they don't. Maybe at some point in our distant ancestry, our very great, 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 great grandparents did have need of their appendix or their wisdom teeth, but who knows? This is Miss Hill checking in once again from our virtual classroom. I'm leaving Nepal right now. I have my passport and my ticket. We're checked in. I'm gonna go through security and we'll see where I make my next video from.